coming up on today's broadcast, you're going to see a 15-year-old mute boy that never spoke in his life speak for the first time and other really powerful demonstrations of God's power. Stay tuned, beloved. It's going to be a great broadcast today in Jesus' name. Rabbi Schneider is a voice crying out in our lost world, pointing mankind to Jesus today. Shalom, I'm Cynthia, Rabbi's wife. Beloved, we are so thankful for what God is doing in people's lives through this ministry all around the world. I pray right now that whatever you need in your life, God will minister to you as Rabbi teaches and preaches God's word. Shalom and God bless you, beloved ones. My name is Rabbi Schneider. Welcome today to a very important edition of Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm going to take you inside Africa and show you miracles that some of you probably have never seen in your life. For example, you're going to see a boy that's 15 years old. He has never spoken a word his entire life. He was set free of being mute. He began to talk, beloved, first time in 15 years. His 20-year-old sister was on the grounds there, so excited you couldn't believe it. You're going to see her give testimony about what the Lord did for her brother. You're also going to see a madman, a guy that was out of his mind get healed, and many other supernatural signs and wonders. Today's broadcast is designed to lift your faith level. Let's go inside now and see that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever as we go inside the interior of Africa to see the signs and wonders that God is performing there. I love you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Wherever you've had a problem in your body, put your hand on that part of your body. If it's been on your heart, put your hand on your heart. If it's been in your stomach, put your hand in your stomach. By his stripes, you are healed. I'm just going to release right now the anointing of the Holy Spirit to do exactly what he wants to do during this time of ministry. Through his blood, and by his blood, his healing anointing is coming on you and into you and healing you. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were ill. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Jesus, that you paid the price to set this daughter free. Somehow it is indescribable, but man, God was walking with his bare feet. Demons were popping up like popcorns out of the people. I'm telling you, people were rolling on the grounds, people were running, people were falling down, people were fighting, but you cannot fight something that is no less than your power. That means there was a greater power that invaded that place and the demons had to go because Jesus was present. The Lord bless you and the Lord will keep you and he's going to keep on surrounding you with his peace. Amen. 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 You have no right here, Satan. You have no right here, Satan. Everyone, every, all of you out. Yes, all of you out. All of you go out. Oh, that's right, all of you. All of you. Hallelujah, honey. God bless you, honey. God bless you, sweetheart. After the demon left her, 
tears streamed down her face as she hugged Cynthia and myself. My heart rejoiced in her freedom as the Lord poured out His love onto her. But He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon Him, and by His scourging we are healed. Winning. Winning. She was born deaf and dumb. Born deaf and dumb. Yes, she's 15 years of age. 15 years of age. But after prayer. Tonight after prayer. Her ears popped up open. Her ears opened. She I can now hear heard slightly. Heard. She can hear. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, you can hear. We've, yeah. we've tested her. Yeah. She we've tested her ears. Yes. She can yeah. now hear properly. You can hear. Yeah, and she's trying to speak. Yeah. yeah. This is her neighbor. This is her neighbor. This is her neighbor. Okay. We need cannot talk. We need cannot hear, but she's hearing. Now is she right now? Can you can you say something? Yeah. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Dennis, he came here yesterday. Yes. And he had a problem. They went. To, they took, her, took, took him to the hospital. They took him to the hospital. They found out that he had wounds all over from the throat up to the stomach. Wounds on the inside. You know, yesterday I came here. My papa brought me here. Said I let the priest pray for me. Then when I go back, I die. So I may meet Jesus. But after yesterday, yes, when we you prayed for him, yes, when the power touched him, the power got to him. He went back and ate. He went back no, and ate. He didn't feel any pain. Oh, no, no, no. Even today, when he ate, the pain was not there. Wow! Jesus wow! Jesus wow! Jesus wow. Jesus that is awesome! Well, basically, let me say that healing takes place in several ways. Healing can take place when the Word of God is just simply proclaimed, healing is taught, and the minister releases the Word in Jesus' name, you're healed. So healing is released by the Word. Healing can also be released through a point of contact. For example, Jesus took the spittle and He applied it to the people's eyes. That spittle on the eyes was a point of contact. When they felt something physical, that point of contact in the physical gave them the ability to release their faith. The same thing happens when we're called to come to the elder of the church, have them anoint us with oil, and then the prayer of faith will save the sick. And healing just sometimes happens sovereignly. So healing happens multiple ways. Okay. Okay. Lord Jesus, even as you, when you walked on the earth in the flesh, and you healed the blind man, but it came in two stages. And how at first he could see more clearly, but couldn't see well. I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to finish the job on this servant in your name. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Deaf ears, be now opened. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. She can hear. She can hear? Let's give God praise tonight. We thank God for all the partners of Rabbi and the entire ministry. All the blessings we have experienced, God has used you as a channel to make sure Rabbi is in our town. And I can say, may the Lord bless you mightily for your support to this mission. But you guys have fed us both spiritually and physically. We love you people, all people who support us. To you, the partners of Rabbi Snyder, a million thanks from my heart. I hope that that fully registered. What these pastors from the nations of Africa were doing was thanking you, beloved, that have supported this ministry. Basically what they were saying was, thank you for supplying the funds to Rabbi Schneider and discovering the Jewish Jesus, which allowed him to come to minister to me. You know, many of the places that we're going to in Africa, beloved, they're remote places. I'm oftentimes the first ministering visitor from outside their country that they've ever had. And so I say to you, along with them, thank you, thank you, thank you, 
Thank you for sending me, beloved, to the nations of the world through television, radio, and through these on-the-ground mission crusades. Know for certain that your financial support is strengthening the church, and many are being saved because of you. God bless you. I love you. And shalom. Now, back to today's program. Beloved, some people lack faith in God's demonstrating His healing powers in the lives of His people today. In other words, some people look at the Bible as the way that God acted when Jesus was on earth, but that God's no longer doing the same things today that He did in the Bible. For example, let's take the phenomenon of Jesus physically healing people in the Gospels. So many times Jesus healed people. The scripture says that everywhere Jesus went, he did three things. He preached the gospel, he healed the sick, and he cast out spirits from those that were tormented by evil spirits. Many people today believe that now that we have the Bible, God's not doing those types of supernatural things anymore. They think that the only thing that's left to do is study the Bible. But I want to demonstrate to you two things. Number one, I want to demonstrate to you that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And secondly, I want to show you that things like physical healing, these are part of the atonement. Let's take the first one. This is something that we don't need to take much time on. Is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? The book of Hebrews tells us He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paul tells us in the book of Corinthians that there's one Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit has been given to each one in the body to demonstrate a different necessary gift and aspect of God to the body. In other words, the scripture says some people are giving gifts of teaching. Some people are giving gifts of preaching. Some people are giving gifts of faith. The scripture goes on to say some people are given gifts of miracles and some people are given gifts of healings. So Paul was writing this to the church, assuming, beloved, that the church was still going to need these gifts after the letter was written. And so what we understand then is that healing gifts and miracle gifts are still for today. Now listen as I change gears here. I'm going to the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. Jesus had just come down from the mountain where he taught the most famous sermon that we have in the scriptures, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 8, 16 and 17, he's just come down from the mountain after preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And listen to what Matthew records for us when he comes down the mountain. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were ill. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. So Jesus backs up his sermon, beloved, by demonstrating the authenticity of it through supernatural healing. And it's really interesting here that when Jesus healed all that were sick here, Matthew tells us that his healing the sick was in fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. What's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5 about? Beloved, it's about Jesus dying on the cross. What Matthew is telling us here is that when Jesus died on the cross for you and me, he didn't just take our sin away, but he also took our sickness and disease away. So Jesus healing the people demonstrated that he himself took not only their sin away, but also their sickness away. That's why oftentimes when Jesus healed somebody, he said to them, man, your sins are forgiven, and then he healed them. Did you know that John the Apostle wrote this in his letter? He said, brethren, I desire that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I want you to receive, beloved, everything that Jesus died to give you and me. He didn't just give us his little finger. He gave us his whole body. Beloved, Jesus died for you. And his intention for you and I is that we'd have shalom, that we'd be whole, spirit, soul, mind, and body. And he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Ever since he was born, I've never heard him talking. This is the first time I've heard him talking. 
God was just showing us his power. People are saved, the lame can walk, the dumb can hear. He's still alive today as he was 2,000 years ago. Miracles are real. One. I saw God do perhaps the most outstanding miracle I've ever seen him do in my life, where we saw a verifiable 15-year-old child who, for the first time, heard sounds and spoke a word. Never heard in his life, never spoke in his life, got healed last night, was able to hear, was able to speak. It was awesome. This young boy is called David. He was born deaf and dumb. Wow. But when you prayed, the power of God touched this young man. Hallelujah. He can now talk. He can now hear. Could he talk at all before tonight? He's talking right now. Could he talk? He's never talked since when he was born. He's never talked since he was born. Come on, give God a hand for that. One. I really force the issue with the sister because I don't want any hype. I don't want to exaggerate anything. I don't want to pretend something's a miracle. Either it's real or it's not real. The proof of this, a Dichini Chotokwata, is in his sister. She's lived with David her whole life. And she said, since David was born, he never talked until tonight. This is the best time for me to see this. I only see this on television. Now I have seen it's real. It's real. Jesus really is working. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is Kakuma in Northern Kenya, Turkana. And we thank God for Rabbi coming to our place, coming to our area. Uh, there is this madman who has been walking around in the town. He is known by everyone of uh, making chows, making uh, problems, and even going naked. He's been really demonic. And uh, since yesterday, after the prayer from Rabbi, we saw from the pulpit and in front of people, we saw him in sound mind. We saw him well, speak well, doing things that he could not do before. He's totally healed. Are you healed today? And we thank God, everyone here in our town knows that man. And our testimony is going around of this man who has not been able to coordinate his mind well, but after prayer, he is now walking in his right mind and personally i'm looking for him to put him in our church so for discipleship we thank god for the healing of this madman when i was walking i lifted my leg like this i felt as if someone was trying to twist my leg and it was very painful but up to now as i'm standing before you my brothers and sisters And he said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Beloved, I want to encourage you by a personal experience that I had with the Lord 
involving Exodus 15, 26. Some time ago, I was getting ready to go minister in Gulu, Uganda. The days leading up to this ministry event, I started getting a really severe pain in my heart, so I went to the doctor. The doctor took an EKG. A few hours later, the doctor called me and said, Rabbi, the EKG didn't come back normal. I need you to go in and take a stress test. The problem was I didn't have time. I was packing my bags to go out of town. I said, doctor, listen, I said, when I get back from Gulu, I'll go ahead and take the stress test. She said, you need to take your health seriously. I was concerned. I packed my bags, continued on my journey. The night before I was actually supposed to leave on the plane for Gulu, the pain got so bad. I woke my wife up in the middle of the night. I said, honey, I don't know if I should go. I think maybe it's irresponsible for me to go. The pain in my heart really hurts. She started praying prayers of faith over me as to how many people God was going to touch when I was in Uganda. I fell back asleep really encouraged. But when I woke up the next morning, again, fear started pressing in. I said, Father, I need to hear from you. I said, if you want me to go to Gulu despite this heart pain, speak to me. I opened up a Bible, which I had sitting in my lap. It opened up randomly, so to speak, to Exodus 15. I looked down and immediately my eyes fell on Exodus 15, 26, which says, I am Yahweh Rofecha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. It's the only place in the entire word of God where the Lord identifies himself by name as Yahweh Rofecha, the Lord that healeth thee. The verse also says, if you walk in my ways, if you keep my statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. I knew that the Lord had spoke to me. He was conveying to me two things. Number one, that I could trust him to be my healer, that I could trust him to be my health, that I could trust him with this pain that I was having in my heart. But he was also saying to me, you need to be careful to walk in my ways so that I can do all for you that I want to do for you. Beloved, the same is true for you and I. I believe in doctors, but at the end of the day, the Lord is our healer. And we can experience his supernatural health in our lives through these physical bodies as we abide in him. Jesus said, if you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit. And one of those fruits, beloved, is that the Holy Spirit, according to the word of God, gives life even to these mortal bodies. Jesus is not only our savior, beloved, he's also our healer, even in these physical bodies. I just wanna pray a word of blessing over you right now. Father, right now, I just speak faith over your people that each one of us, Father God, would have the faith to trust you to be our savior and our healer. Jesus, I think about how many people you heal physically in the New Testament, and we believe, Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus, I release faith over your people. Father, strengthen us to trust you. Strengthen us to trust your son, to be both our savior and our healer, even in these physical bodies. Father, thank you, we love you. What you saw today was fruit. These lives that are being changed, people that are being healed. I just got back from Malawi a few weeks ago. Do you know how many decision cards we received for people that were receiving Jesus for the first time? Listen, beloved, 3,400 salvations were recorded. 3,400 people filled out a card that they were receiving Jesus Christ for the first time. Malawi right now, by the way, is rated as the poorest nation in the world in terms of their gross domestic product. It costs money for me to broadcast beloved ones. It costs money for me to go to places like Africa. If you believe in me, if this ministry is blessing you, would you pray, beloved, about supporting me at Discovering the Jewish Jesus so I can continue to bring the gospel around the world. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. God bless you today in Jesus' name and shalom. Here is how you can partner with us. Send your tax deductible gift to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan 49228. To make a credit card donation, call 1-800-777-7835. That's 1-800-777-7835. To donate securely online, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. To show our appreciation, we will send you an audio CD of Rabbi Schneider's Message of the Month, as well as our most recent newsletter. To learn more about this ministry and for more information about Rabbi Schneider's rich spiritual resources, or Messianic Music by Joshua James, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. If you have a testimony of how the Lord has used Discovering the Jewish Jesus to change your life, we invite you to share it with us. Visit us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the testimonies link. I have been so blessed by your series 
a parallel reality. I had been attacked with fear, anxiety, and hopelessness. I learned that not only does His Spirit live in me, but also that I have the inherited right to use His power on earth. I am not alone. God is always with me. Thank you for your ministry and sharing the love of Christ. I have had a great awakening. Kim from Alabama. We're glad you joined us today and we want to pray for you. Send us your prayer request by mail or by visiting us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. We also want to thank you for your prayer support and for your financial support to us. In supporting Discovering the Jewish Jesus, you become a partner with God in building His kingdom. Thank you and may the Lord pour back into your life as you partner together with us. Beloved one, as we close the broadcast today, I want to release Father's blessing on your life. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, the Lord told Moses that when these words are spoken over his people, that he would place his name on them and bless them. Yavarechech Yahweh Ya er Yahweh panave lecha vichunecha Yisa Yahweh panave lecha veasem lecha The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord will lift you up with his countenance and the Lord will give you his peace. Maybe you've watched the broadcast today and Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart and you've never invited him into your life before and you'd like to do that right now. Just repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came and died for my sins and I receive you into my life right now. Thank you for dying for my sins and taking my place on the cross. Come inside and live in me now. Jesus, I give my life to you. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, let us know. God bless you, beloved ones. I love you and shalom. Rabbi Schneider has great faith-building resources available for you 24-7. Visit our website to send us your prayer requests. Watch full episodes. Download Rabbi's teaching notes and so much more, all at discoveringthejewishjesus.com.